Hey guys, Rich from GunTortureTest.com. What I have here is a High Point C9. Now I promised you guys a video on the breakdown, the specs and stuff, and so that's why we're here doing this. The High Point C9 is a budget is a budget pistol made in Ohio, in Mansfield, Ohio. They have a lifetime warranty. Um, they usually cost less than about two hundred dollars, and uh, their warranty support, in my opinion, is probably the best in the industry. Why I say that is because if you have a problem with your high point, it doesn't matter if you're the first owner or the tenth, you call them, they tell you to ship it to them, nine times out of ten they're going to send you a new gun. Uh, I don't know of any other manufacturers that do that, actually. Um, a little bit about the high point, they're heavy, they're ugly. And when I say heavy, I mean 29 ounces empty, 29 ounces. This isn't really the perfect concealed carry gun, guys. Uh, what it is, is perfect nightstand gun. It's a perfect glove box gun, toolbox gun, um, on the boat gun, backpack gun. Um, it's the perfect oh crap gun. Um, for as far as concealed carry goes, it's a little on the heavy side. Now, why is it so heavy? It's simple. It's a blowback pistol. Now, what that means is that it's designed the way the gun cycles when you fire the bullet, and this is a 9mm, when you fire the bullet, the gas is expanding. The force on the gas is expanding is what cycles the gun. That's why it's called a blowback. It blows it back. Now the slide has to be heavy enough to remain locked until the projectile leaves the barrel, and then it forces the slide back, ejects the projectile, strips another one off the magazine, and it's a done deal. That's why it's so heavy. If it was too light, it wouldn't cycle properly. Unlike this. This is a Kimber 1911. Yeah, don't yeah, don't lose that screw. <laughs> this is a Kimber 1911. This is a recoil operated gun. What that means is it cycles using the recoil of the gun itself. Now, that's the major difference between the two other than the Kimber, believe it or not, a full size 1911 is seven ounces lighter than the high point. The Kimber is also, depending on which model you get, anywhere between eight hundred and fifteen, sixteen, seventeen hundred dollars. Now, I promised you guys that I would give you a quick video on how the gun breaks down and all where the moving parts are. Now a lot of people think that the high point is junk. Personally, not me. Um, it's a very simple breakdown procedure, but you don't even really have to because if you look in the instructions, the instructions tell you, and I'm going to quote from the owner's manual, barrel should be brushed every three to four hundred rounds, complete disassembly and cleaning should be performed every fifteen hundred to two thousand rounds. Now I have a high point at the house that I've put at this point over seven thousand rounds through, I've never cleaned it and I've never oiled it. But if you decide to get one of these and you decide to break it down, it's really, really easy. First off, obviously, take the magazine out and confirm that the weapon is empty. Next, lock the slide back. Grab you a punch, about a one-eighth punch. Right here behind this little red dot's a pin. Take the punch and a hammer. Tap that pin out. There's the pin. Release the slide. Bring it back about three eighths of an inch. Push straight up. That's it. Now, granted, it's not a toolless disassembly. You do need to remove this roll pin, but it's still really, really easy, and it goes back together just as easy. Now you're looking at this and you're probably thinking, well, Rich, why is the barrel of the gun on the frame? Why isn't it, you know, uh, like on a 1911 or a Glock? Well, that's part of the whole point behind a blowback design. On blowback guns, the barrel is usually part of the frame, not the slide. Believe it or not, this actually enhances the accuracy. Um, 
for cleaning and maintenance and all this other stuff, that's really it, guys. You know, run a board brush down it, put a little bit of oil on the rails, a little bit of oil in here, and put it back together. Putting it back together is just as easy. Obviously, this is going to go in here. Now I'm going to make a fool of myself, and it's not going to go back together easy. But we'll find out. Ah, look at that. Now, this is the retainer for the, uh, hang on. <laughs> there we go. And we're back. Now, lock it to the rear again. Take the pin. Start it. Well, as long as you're using a rubber mallet, you're good to go. Drive the pin in. Now the pin is not the same length as the frame is wide, and there's a reason for that. Well, so you can countersink it. Now, that's it. Now here's a cool thing about the high point. It actually has two safeties. The first one, obviously, is a locking bar for the trigger. And there it is. It's the same bar that you use to hold the slide back. The other one, which I like, is this. This is an empty magazine. You just saw me cock this gun. Magazine in. I'm pointing it in a safe direction, namely my phone. Bang, right? Awesome. Now, because this locks open on the last on an empty magazine, drop the magazine, bring it back into battery. Now, the gun is cocked, right? Pull the trigger. Oh, nothing! Oh, oh! So what does that mean, guys? What that means is in a, in a, in a defensive situation, if the bad guy happens to take your gun from you, as long as you have the presence of mind to drop the magazine, they can't shoot you with your own gun. Now, again, it's 29 ounces, so they could probably beat you to death with it, but they're certainly not going to shoot you with your own gun. A lot of people talk bad about High Point. They're cheap, they're ugly, they're blocky, they're heavy. You know what? It's true. This isn't an attractive gun. And it is very, very heavy. I could probably use this as a boat anchor. And it is cheap. I sell these for $180 out the door. Where else are you going to get a, made, uh, you know, a gun that's made in America with an awesome lifetime warranty for less than $200 out the door? Um, but they go bang every single time you press the trigger. Now this is the exact gun that Eric is going to use this coming Saturday. This is the exact gun. Uh, this is a brand new gun. Okay, it's not broken in. I haven't done anything to it. I haven't done any trigger work to it. I haven't done anything at all to tune it up or or make it function any better than it functions out of the box. This is the exact gun. The last four digits on the serial number are four five zero six. And on Saturday, when I record the video of the match, I'm going to have Eric read off the last four digits of the serial number on camera. This is the exact same gun he's going to use. And we're going to see what happens when a high point C9 is put into an actual simulated combat or personal defense situation. Until then, thanks for watching. My name is Rich, and it's GunTortureTest.com.